Hi, Oz. Oh, hi, Thorny. What are you so engrossed in? I've just been reading a very interesting article here about Listerine Anazine toothpaste. It says it stops the major cause of tooth decay every minute of every day. Well, that's no secret. I know that. Well, you read this magazine? Why, sure. I also use the toothpaste. <laughs> Listerine, the most widely used antiseptic in the world, and Antizyme, the first all-day anti-enzyme toothpaste, are happy to bring you a repeat performance of one of the best-liked of The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring the entire Nelson family. Here is Ozzie, who plays the part of Ozzie Nelson, and of course his lovely wife Harriet as Harriet Nelson. The older of the Nelson boys, David, appears as David Nelson. And his younger brother, the irrepressible Ricky, played by Ricky Nelson. The Nelson's next door neighbor, Thorny, is played by Don DeFore. I tackled you, didn't I? What kind of a tackle do you call that? I call it using the old noggin. Watch your language, David. The noggin is your head. That's not where you grab me. Answer the door, will you? Answer the door, he says. What am I, the doorman? You to stand right in front of us is it too much trouble? Be you lazy or something? Do the Nelsons live here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's nobody home right now, though. Well, we're from the Emporium. We got a couple of chairs we got to deliver here. This is it, Joe. Do you need any help? No, thanks, Lester. I think we can handle it all right. Do you need any help? You couldn't even lift one of those chairs. It doesn't hurt to be polite. Boy, those are sure swell-looking chairs. Yeah. I wonder how come we're getting new chairs. I don't know. I guess Mom ordered them. Yeah. Now, if one of you fellows would be good enough to sign this receipt here for me. Here, I'll sign it. No, you better let me do it, Ricky. What's the matter with me? Nothing. You write very well for a boy your age. Just happens to be an important paper, that's all. You better let your big brother sign it this time. You can sign it next time. Next time? We buy so many chairs around here. <laughs> oh, okay, thanks. Well, so long, fellas. So Bye. long. Goodbye, boys. Thanks Bye. Thanks for the chairs. Boy, these are really nice-looking chairs. I bet I could do a neat headstand in these. No acrobatics now, Ricky. These chairs are to sit in. Gee, you sound just like Pop. <laughs> What's all this about? New chairs. Oh, I thought I saw the Emporium truck pull away a moment ago. They look swell, don't they, Pop? Yeah, these are real nice. I signed for them. Big man. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Your mother would go out and buy new chairs without speaking to me about it, though. They sure look nice, though, don't they? Yeah, not only look nice, but they're mighty comfortable. They sure are, boy. Remember, you guys, no acrobatics on these. These are for sitting in. Hey, you sound just like David. <laughs> Convention. Oh, all right, Harry. You're just in time. Your chairs just arrived. Chairs? Well, yeah, the, the chairs you ordered from the Emporium. Well, there must be some mistake. They're the wrong ones? Why don't I hang about them? You mean you didn't order these two chairs? Well, certainly not. I wouldn't order chairs without asking you first. Well, why would they have two chairs delivered here if you didn't order them? Maybe it's a present from the Emporium. No, I hardly think so. I don't know, Mom. I buy an awful lot of stuff down there. <laughs> Maybe there's a mix-up down at the store and they have another Nelson in mind or something. You better phone them. Tell them come pick them up. Uh, do you know the number? No, I don't. It's probably in the phone book, though. Uh, uh, Dave, would you get the book for me, please? It's on the table. Get settled in these chairs. They're so darn comfortable. Here you are, Pa. Thanks. Let's have a catch, Rick. Oh, not in the house. And don't go too far because lunch will be ready soon. Just tell them there's been some mistake. Emporium. Uh, hello. I I'd like to have the complaint department, please. I imagine that's the best. Complaints and adjustments. Oh, uh, hello. Uh, my name is Nelson. I imagine you'd be the one to contact. A couple of large living room chairs were delivered to our house when there was nobody home. That is, only our boys were home. They let the men in. Have the chairs been damaged, sir? Oh, no, no. They're in, in perfect condition. They're very nice chairs. <laughs> in fact, they're very the comfortable. Point, dear. Uh, uh, pardon me. What did you say? I said get to the point. <laughs> Hello, are you still there? Oh, for goodness sake. You know, I didn't recognize you. Uh, 
recognize you at first, Mabel. Mabel? <laughs> She thinks I'm somebody else. Well, who for goodness sake? Well, uh, somebody named uh, uh, Joe. I, 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 th I think. Hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> Can you start all over again, please. Look, uh, I'm not Mabel. Mabel. Uh, I'm not Joe. I'm a customer, and I have a complaint to register about two chairs that were delivered to our home this morning by mistake. You mean this isn't Mabel? No, it isn't. You must have a bad connection. Uh, my name is Nelson. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I have this friend with a low voice, and she's all the time kidding. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, they were delivered to our house, but we didn't order them. Uh, apparently, they were ordered by somebody else. What was the name again, please? Nelson. Ozzy Nelson. Oh, thank you, Mr. Nelson. I'll check this as soon as the men come in. Yeah, well, uh, just one thing, though. The name on the receipt will be David. David Nelson. They were sent to Ozzy Nelson, but David signed them. I see. Is that R for Robert? R? <laughs> No, 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 no. They were ordered by Ozzy Nelson, not R-Z. Ah, ah, like in Gargle. Well, I'm terribly sorry. Now, you say the chairs were ordered by this Mr. Gargi Nelson. Yes, that's right. Well, they were not ordered by Gargi. They were... In the first place, there's nobody in the world named Gargi Nelson. <laughs> Miss... Let's assume for the moment that there is such a person as Gargi Nelson. He did not order the chairs. That's what you said. They were ordered by Mr. David Nelson. And no, 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 no. David is the boy who signed for them. I see. Then, then David was at Gargi Nelson's house at the time the chairs arrived. <laughs> That's right. Uh, David is my son. I'm Gargi. <laughs> At your convenience, would you please stop by and pick up the two chairs? Are you sure this isn't Mabel? <laughs> Believe me, it's not Mabel. Well, okay, I'll send the truck over. But you sure sound like Mabel. <laughs> Anything you say, uh, just uh, pick up the chairs. Thorny? Well, this is a coincidence. Just coming over to see you. Oh, good for you. Catherine's out visiting some of the relatives, so I thought maybe I'd get a couple of books and spend the day relaxing in one of your new chairs. Oh, uh, how'd you hear about the chairs? Well, I saw the guys delivering them. Oh, well, there was a mistake about them, Thorny. They weren't supposed to be for us. I phoned the Emporium, and they're sending a pickup truck with a couple of men. They're going to take them back to the store. Yeah? When'd you phone them? Oh, about half hour ago. Why? Gee, how can that be? It was only ten minutes ago I saw them delivering the chairs. No, 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 no. You saw the men taking the chairs from our house out to the pickup truck. Oh, maybe that was it. All I know is I saw a couple of guys picking chairs. Now, wait a minute. They were taking the chairs into your house. No, 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 no. You saw the men taking the chairs from our house out to the truck. Oz, were you there? No, I wasn't there, but I know what they were doing. Think now. You saw two guys come into our house, get chairs, and take them out to the truck. Not unless they were walking backwards. <laughs> remember hearing the chairs bang up against the front door. Now, they wouldn't be that careless if they were taking them back. Ozzy? Uh, Harriet, you're just in time to explain something to poor old Thorny. Yeah, well, maybe you can explain something to poor old Harriet. What? What's the matter? Why did the store send us two more chairs? <laughs> they did send us two more chairs? Well, for goodness sakes, you heard me talking on the phone with the girl, and she promised to send the truck right over. Well, she sent the truck right over, all right, with two more chairs. How do you like that? Well, I explained the whole thing very carefully to her on the phone. You, you heard me, Harriet. All I know is I just walked into the living room, and we now have a total of four new chairs. <laughs> straighten well, this Wait a minute, Oz. Where are you going? I'm going to go in and phone the Emporium and straighten this girl out. What girl? Well, you know, a Mabel. That, that is not uh, Mabel. I'm Mabel. <laughs> well, no, I, I mean, uh, the... You know, the, that's what the girl called me, uh, Mabel. That's how the whole confusion started. What confusion? Well, about the chairs and, and Mabel and Gargi. Gargi? Now, who's Gargi, Mabel? Uh, well, I'll, I'll explain the whole thing uh, at some later time, Thorny, but I'm going to call those people at the Emporium and tell them they can't push around a guy named Mabel. <laughs> 
You've read about it in your favorite magazines. An exciting new scientific discovery developed in a great university laboratory. Science has discovered the anti-enzyme. The continuous action anti-enzyme brought to you for the first time in Listerine Antizyme Toothpaste. Now you and your children can give your teeth a new kind of protection that was never before possible. Pure white Listerine Antizyme Toothpaste contains an exclusive anti-enzyme ingredient that brushes onto tooth surfaces and stays there, protecting the enamel of your teeth against harmful decay acids every minute of every day, 12 to 24 hours after each brushing. This was proved for nine out of every 10 people tested. Other types of toothpaste, regular, ammoniated, or chlorophyll can protect for only a few minutes. Listerine Antizyme toothpaste stops the major cause of tooth decay every minute of every day. Hello, I'd like to speak to the manager, please. See that tight-lipped, fiery-eyed fellow talking on the telephone? Uh, the this is Ozzie Nelson. <laughs> this morning. This morning, two chairs were delivered to my house by mistake. Yes, anyway, Ozzie called the Emporium. I called the Emporium and asked to have them picked up. Exactly. But instead and Instead I... of picking up two chairs, they brought us two more. So now, Ozzie would like... So now, I'd like to have the four chairs picked up. Well, the guy just doesn't stand a chance around here unless his name is Nelson. Are you sure you've got that straight now? That'll be fine. Thank you very much. Wait a minute. What's going on here? Oh, hi, Pop. Pop. You're just in time to watch me do a backflip. Now, wait a minute. These aren't our chairs. Well, we're not hurting them any, Pop. Well, Ricky just said he was going to do a back flip. Yeah, but I just bounce off these new ones. I land on this old stuff. Well, look, I don't care where you bounce or where you land. These aren't our chairs, and they're brand new. Now, no acrobatics of any kind. Golly, what good are new chairs, then? Well, Webster defines a chair as something to sit in. He probably couldn't do a back flip. <laughs> one trick, Pop. Well, okay, just this once now. And be careful, and don't break your neck. <laughs> hey, that's real good, Rick. Well, now, no more. That's a... David. <laughs> now, these chairs aren't for acrobatics, David. Yeah, I'm not hurting the chairs, Pop. Well, I mean, you're, you're doing a handstand on them. Besides, if you're going to do a handstand on a chair, you're not supposed to put your hands on the opposite arms. The way we used to do it was to put one hand up here on the back of the chair and then this hand on the arm, so a little more spectacular. Gee, I didn't know you could do a handstand, Pa. Well, I, I haven't done it in quite some time, but uh, maybe I could still do it. We used to give it the... I get these big shoes off. They're as heavy as lead. Uh, maybe you guys gave me a little boost here, huh? Oh, boy, honey! Here's your poor old father just for a couple of measly pennies. Oh, gee, I'm sorry. Let me help you up. No, it's all right. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, the chair is pretty comfortable, though. Kind of nice-looking chairs, too. Those old ones are getting kind of shabby. Yeah, I'm ashamed to be seen jumping in them. Keep these, Pop? Well, I don't think we ought to keep all four of them, but I think maybe we might buy these two. Oh, boy, let's put on our gym trunks, David. No, 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 wait a minute, Ricky. If I buy these chairs for your mother, they're to be sat in. They're not for acrobatics. You can use something else for your gymnastics. How about buying us a trapeze? Well, or, or a cage, maybe. <laughs> I 
think I'd better phone the Emporium and tell them we're going to keep these two chairs. Gee, this will be a swell surprise for Mom. We could put the trapeze in the backyard. We could hang it from the limb of the big tree. Yeah, that'd be a neat place. I bet I could hang by my toes. <laughs> uh, hello, could I speak to the manager, please? Hello, is this the manager? Oh. Uh, well, Mr. Osborne, I spoke to the manager a few minutes ago about picking up four chairs. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, my name is Nelson. Uh, Ozzy Nelson. And this morning, two chairs were delivered to my house by mistake. And I called to have them taken back, but instead of picking up two chairs, the men brought us two more. And then I called the manager and asked him to send somebody out to pick up the four chairs. And now I decided that uh, we'd like two new chairs. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I don't want you to send us two more chairs. <laughs> we'll simply keep two chairs and send back two chairs. Don't forget the trapeze. Uh, yes, I did want four chairs picked up, and now I want to keep two chairs. Yes, just have the men pick up two chairs instead of four chairs, and then we keep two chairs and, and charge them to my account. Have them charge a trapeze to my account. Ricky, go have a banana or something. <laughs> uh, what was that, Mr. Osborne? All right. Thank you very much. What do you say, Pop? Uh, well, I think he's got everything straightened out now. Why don't you guys go on outside and play for a while? Can we take the chairs? No, no, of course not. Uh, pass the football around or something. Come on in, Thorny. Hi, Oz. Hi, boy. Hey, get a load of all the chairs. Now, this is what I call a real cozy room. Oh, thanks. Hey, sink yourself down in that beige chair, see how you like it. Thanks. <sighs> What's the verdict? Ours, in my 30 years of professional loafing, I've never been in a more comfortable chair. <laughs> yeah, we kind of like it. Oh, it's wonderful. Uh, don't forget to call me for dinner. <laughs> I'm going to buy those two chairs for Harriet. It's uh, sort of a surprise. What are you going to do with the old chairs? Haven't thought much about it. Guess I'll trade them in. Trade them in? Well, they wouldn't make it worth your while. Now, I have a better idea. Why don't you donate them to the men's lounge at the bowling alley? You mean at Monaghan's? Well, sure. You're always saying how nice it would be to have a comfortable place to sit while we're waiting for an alley. Well, well I'd better ask Harriet first. What for? Well, she may object. Well, then why ask her? <laughs> oh, I'm sure she wouldn't care. After all, it's for a good cause. Oh, certainly. Then you'll tell Monahan to come pick him up, huh? Yeah, yeah, okay, Oz. It's so, anyway, I mean, I think I'll walk down as far as the drugstore with you. Well, fine, fine. Well, I'll just put my shoes on and get my coat. <laughs> Let's go. Oh. <laughs> now, Thorny, I used to be a pretty good acrobat when I was a kid. Well, goody for you. Where are the chairs? Well, they were picked up. But they took all four of them. Well, yes, of course. Gee, didn't Pop tell you? Tell me what? Well, he wanted to keep two of them. He was going to surprise you. Oh, golly, I made the man take all four of them. Oh, oh golly. Hi, Harriet, boys. Hi, Pop. Don't sit down in the new chairs, because they aren't here. <laughs> what happened to the new chairs? Well, I'm afraid I had them sent back to the store. I told that guy that he no, was... it's my fault. The man said he was only supposed to pick up two of them, and I made him take all four. Oh, golly. That's what we said. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll get it. Mr. Nelson? Yes? Well, we're from the Emporium. We're supposed to pick up two chairs. Oh, well, I'm afraid you're a little late. The man picked them up a while ago. That's impossible. Lenny and I are the only ones on the afternoon shift. Well, uh, uh, no, my wife, uh, Harriet. Just a minute, the phone's ringing. Well, 
Now, where are the chairs, please? Oh, uh, no. I, I'm, I'm sorry, but my wife was here, and the man from the Emporium came over and picked up the chairs. Well, I'm dreadfully sorry, but I know he wasn't from the Emporium. Well, uh, Ozzy, the strangest thing just happened. Some man just phoned from the bowling alley and said thanks for the chairs. <laughs> don't tell me you gave those chairs to the man from the bowling alley. Well, I don't know. Some man came to the back door and said he had to pick up two chairs. Well, did he say he was from the Emporium? Well, naturally, I assumed he was from the Emporium. I keep telling you we're from the Emporium. You can ask Lenny. He'll tell you that we're from the Emporium. We're from the Emporium. <laughs> chairs, please. It's getting late. Gee, I, I'm awfully sorry, fellows. This is very embarrassing, but there's been sort of a little mix-up, and I'll straighten out everything tomorrow morning. But that won't help me any. I've got orders to pick up two chairs this afternoon. They won't let me check out if I don't come back with them. Well, I'm very sorry, and I'd help you out if I could, but you can see for yourself we don't have the chairs. What about those two chairs in the living room? Those are our old chairs. Those are not the chairs that are supposed to go back to the Emporium. The slip just says two chairs. They won't let me go home if I don't bring back two chairs. Well, you can't have those chairs. Those are our old chairs. They're not the chairs you're supposed to take. I want to go home. <laughs> Why don't you let them take the old chairs and we can settle the whole thing in the morning? Okay, go into the living room and take our two chairs, which you're not supposed to take. Nevertheless, you take them anyway, put them in the truck, take them back to the Emporium, and I'll call up tomorrow and settle everything. Does that make you happy? Oh, thank you, sir. And thank you, lady. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I hate to impose on you, but Lenny has a very bad back. I want uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I'll go into the living room and help you carry the chairs out to the truck. Oh, thank you. You're a peach. Hi, Harry. Hi, Thorny. Hey, what the heck's going on here? Who knows? <laughs> Those are fellows from the bowling alley? No, they aren't, Thorny. This is all pretty confusing. They're the men from the Emporium. Fine mess you got me into, you and your brilliant ideas. What'd I do? Well, I don't know who you talked to over at Monahan's, but somebody came over here, picked up the four new chairs, and took them down to the bowling alleys. No kid. Say, they'll make the lounge look great. <laughs> I'm going right back there and pick them up. Oh, no, wait, you can't be an Indian giver. What do you mean, Indian giver? Do you think I'm going to give four brand new chairs to Monahan's alleys? Well, Oz, I think it's very generous of you. Who knows, someday they may name a bowling ball after you. <laughs> oh, Oz, don't take it so serious. In a couple of years from now, you'll look back on this and laugh, and I'll still be laughing. <laughs> hello? Oh, hello, Catherine. Is that for me, Harriet? <laughs> oh, he's right here. I'll let you speak to him. Here, Thorny. <laughs> Hello, dear. Yes, yes, ever delivered over here. Yes, two beige chairs and two green ones. <laughs> What's that? They were for us. <laughs> uh, would you care to speak to my wife? No, no, no thanks. Uh, Harry's? Not me. Uh, look, dear, I'll call you right back. Oh, this is terrible. Those chairs were for us. Catherine had them delivered here so she could break the news to me gradually. You mean Catherine bought all four of the chairs? Well, no, she just wanted to see which chairs looked best in her living room. Ah, so we got to get those chairs back from the bowling alley. Well, Thorny, you don't want me to be an Indian giver. <laughs> well, after all, they're liable to take my name off that bowling ball. Ozzy, <laughs> Thorny, serious. <laughs> all right, come on, Thorny. I'll go down the bowling alley with you and get the chairs. Right now? Right now. Come on. Bless you, Oz. <laughs> All right, will you call the Emporium and tell them what happened? Smokes. Hey, they're stopping in front of your house. Harriet, I don't care what their orders are. I don't care if they can't go home. They're not going to take it. Not going to take what? Look out that window. <laughs> Thank you.
He thought he had the right kind of bait. A perfect day, a secluded spot, a picnic. But he had never been this near to her before. He should have known. Yes, he should have known the risk of being careless about bad breath. It can spoil the most perfect setup. How silly to depend on part-time measures. He thought toothpaste would do the job. If he had only known what he knows now. By actual clinical tests, Listerine antiseptic stopped bad breath four times better than toothpaste. The most common cause of bad breath is germs, and you can't brush germs away, except temporarily. Listerine kills germs by millions, on your teeth, in your mouth, on throat surfaces. Listerine stops bad breath instantly, usually for hours on end. Gargle Listerine regularly, every morning, every night, before every date. You can count on it. Listerine keeps breath sweeter longer, because Listerine antiseptic stops bad breath Four times better than toothpaste. Uh, hello, is this the Emporium? Well, my name is Nelson. Uh, my wife called you this morning about your sending back two of our old chairs that your men insisted on picking up yesterday uh, due to a misunderstanding. Yes. Well, it seems... <laughs> There's been a little more confusion. See, instead of sending our old chairs back, your men picked up our dining room chairs. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a rather an awful... <laughs> Hi, Doc. Well, Fred, I see you taking my advice for that dandruff infection. Doc, there's nothing like this Listerine. Why, it's less than a week, and look, not a flake, not an itch. Keep it up, Fred. Listerine antiseptic kills germs. Here are the results of a clinical test. With the simple twice-a-day Listerine treatment, there was improvement or all dandruff symptoms completely disappeared in a single month in 76% of the cases. 76% of those tested showed improvement or all dandruff symptoms completely disappeared. Scales and flakes, itching scalp may mean infectious dandruff. Well, it just stands to reason where germs are present, you should have germ-killing action. Listerine antiseptic kills germs. And look, not a flake, not an itch. Keep it up, Fred. Listerine antiseptic kills germs by millions. voice on the telephone was Lorene Tuttle. The delivery men were played by Dick Ryan, Rick Sullivan, Ralph Peters, and Henry Kalki. This is Vern Smith speaking. Side story of the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet in the July issue of Coronet Magazine. You'll enjoy this story by Herb Dalmas titled Ozzie, Harriet, and Family. <laughs>